Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Paula with Automated Dynamics. We are the manufacturing rep firm for Banner Turk Red Lion and Pulse products. Uh, today, I want to go over Turk Software Manager. Uh, we get a lot of questions about what software do you need for what products, so we want to make sure we get those questions answered with this video. Uh, I want you to take a look at the softwares that I have checked marked on my computer, which works with a lot of the hardware that we use. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first of all, you'll need to download the software, and I'll put the link uh, so you can visit it directly um, and follow along on the um, description box below. So let's scroll down, click on download, go through all the motions of setting that up in your computer. It doesn't take too long. So what I'll go ahead and do, and I already have this open and set up in my computer, once you get all of that squared away, maybe you can follow along or take some screenshots of what you might need. So you'll notice on the left hand column we have uh, the product lines divided up. So we've got sensor, field bus, interface, safety control, and HMI. So let's uh, navigate through all of those. I'm going to go in order one by one, make sure you know what each means. And then on the columns on the right hand side you've got local, let me open that up. You've got your local column whatever's online. So local means whatever you have installed on your computer. I have version 1.4 of this particular file that I need. Online is available this version. Turk Software Manager does a comparison between these two. Make sure that you're all up to date. I get a green check mark because I have the latest version on that file that's available. If I didn't I would have this little cloud, for example. And then if I wanted to get something downloaded, then I would check mark whatever file, go down here, and download. You'll notice next to my download button, I have a Delta scan. If you already have Turk Software Manager installed in your computer, and you've got everything that you think you need, cool. Make sure you run this Delta scan, you know, maybe once a month or so because you don't want to be caught off guard. There's a new firmware or a new update or whatever. Um, and this is really helpful. It just scans everything automatically and it makes sure that you're up to date. So it's really cool. I like Turk Software Manager. It makes it easy for me to organize my files and uh, make sure I have the latest and greatest software that I need. So let's go by uh, the sensor technology tab on the left hand side. Uh, so in other countries, Banner and Turk are actually the same company. So you'll notice a lot of Banner products are listed here, so they kind of overlap in our software offerings. So we're going to move past this section because these are just Banner products that you're probably not working on through Turk. Field bus technology section, this is probably going to be uh, what's going to take the longest to download. <laughs> Um, so field bus technology products include our Fen 20s, all of our block I.O. that is like IP67 and machine mountable, um, our, BL, our BL compacts, Fen 20s, uh, our TBENs, those are all going to need, those are all considered field bus technology products. So you'll probably need a bunch of the software that's on here. So let's get started. Turk IP address tool. So this is, uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's been kind of obsolete. Like it says, it's been replaced by the Turk service tool, which is next. Our Turk service tool, you'll need this if you have any device that has an IP address. Uh, so any Fen20, BL20, BL67, anything with an IP address, you'll need the Turk service tool. This is a really cool uh, software offering that Turk gives us, so I hope to make a video on this uh, soon. The FLC programming tool, RG. You'll need this if you're going to have any product that is going to have the RG programming environment, so our TBEN series, our BL Compact series, our 
what else? Our Fen 20s, those are all going to use RG environments. Uh, if you're if you're not going to be doing any fancy or any any programming at all with them, then don't worry about it. You don't need you don't need it. But mo if you're doing one of our trainings, you probably will need it. So make sure and check that off. Packedware, packedware. You'll see we have like three sections here. This here is packedware 4.0, 4.1 actually. So this is a uh, this just got replaced by Pactware 5. Moving forward, I don't see, I don't think there is any reason to use Pactware 4. So if this is totally new to you, I would just go forward with Pactware 5. If uh, you have Pactware 4, I would move on with life and get Pactware 5. Uh, you can uninstall Pactware 4 if you wish. Okay? And then you will need the DTMs. Oh, let me uh, say something else about Pactware. Pactware is used for parametrization of our hardware. It gives you a lot of options. It's a really neat software package that allows you to change, like I said, parameters and settings and go online with the, uh, maybe one of your systems. It allows you to create a station report, which is really, really helpful. It also allows you to within the station report to see uh, to create a system and make sure it's gonna work so that's a cool sales tool for our sales channel but also for customers who are picking out uh, hardware through Turk so I really recommend everyone getting packedware always our DTM for field bus IO systems if like I said if you're working with anything with an IP address like a BL20, BL67 our BL Compacts, our Fen20s, our TBENs, you'll need the DTM for the field bus I.O. systems and this allows you to um, use Pactware with, um, with your product. You'll notice XCOM and Foundation Field Bus and DPC here. This will look more familiar to you if you are in the process automation world. So if you get into that stuff then go ahead and download it. I don't really so I, I have it but I don't really use it ever. If you're working with RFID you'll definitely want the DTM for that for your transceivers and also your IO assistant. So that about covers it for the field bus technology section. This is probably going to be your heaviest section to download so I would download this section alone um, at a time. So it could take an hour, it could take 30 minutes to four hours. Like, just make sure that if you're not, you know, running around trying to get this done ASAP because it could take a little while. So our interface technology, um, again, we'll go over some of this. Let's see, uh, FBT frame application packed where you probably have this already check marked if you have packed before, you don't really need it. Um, Heart is a communication protocol that's very common in process automation. If you're working with that stuff, I would suggest you download that. DTM for IODD configurator. So when you're working with IOLINK, you need to convert IODD files into DTM files, which are then available to be imported into Pactware for configuration and seeing a bunch of cool stuff. So you'll need that if you're working with IO Link. The next four items here are banner products, so we'll skip over these. And then you start getting into the IODD library for certain of our products. If you're working with these products, then you definitely need the IODD, so make sure you check those off. I don't get into that too much, so I don't have those downloaded. Safety technology, this is if you recognize these, these are banner products. Let's skip over that. Control and HMI. So control and HMI, this is going to be mostly if you're working with your BL67 or BL20 hardware. Uh, we have hardware that still runs on Codices 2. So if you're if you if you have a gateway that is programmable and it doesn't have the dash V3 at the end of the part number then you're probably still going to be on codices 2.3 if you need to do advanced like 
uh, programming um, or anything like that. If you have some of our newer products and you, you know you're going to require Codices 3.0 or 3.5, you'll need this one to download, the SP8 P1. And then you'll need the TSP for, for working with Codices 3 for the HMIs, which is our TX500, and then our BL20s and 67s that use version 3. And then uh, one of our latest products, TBEN, that is like, it's a block style of our BL products. So anyway, it's um, it uses code as 3 as well. So if you're working with these, definitely download those. I suggest you do if you're coming to one of our trainings. And then I'm not really sure what this visualization software does. Um, I've worked with their HMIs. So, and I haven't needed it, so I don't, maybe I'll uh, follow up here with some answers. And then again, you'll have a repeated line item here of the FLC programming tool RG. So if you need that, like I said, download it. IOLink, if you are working with IOLink, you'll need a bunch of stuff from here. Uh, Pactware 4.1. I think you're fine using Pactware 5, um, so you should already have that downloaded. Like I said, you should already have the DTM for OutDD Configurator also. You'll also need the DTM for USB IO Link Master 1.1 um, if you're working with our small USB adapters, which are really cool. allows you to give a good demonstration or to do some online parametrization on the fly with some of your L-Link products. And then this is a repeated as well, the DTM for field bus I.O. systems. You'll need that probably. DTM for I.O. Link devices. Definitely download that. And then you start getting into the IODD library for a bunch of our product series that you'll see um, are sensors, inductive sensors, um, bunch of stuff, fibers from Banner. A lot of the Banner products are in here too. I work with the Q4X and TL50 series, so I have those IODDs imported into my configurator. So if you see anything that you really need, make sure you check that off. And then finally, the last section is the infrastructure components. I haven't seen any for this, so again, I might follow up with uh, letting you know if we need those for something, but I would suggest if you're starting off with a system, that's probably all that you will need for getting started. And then following this video, we'll, we'll, we'll do some other stuff as well, showing you how to log on or change an IP address. Uh, if you have something that you want to learn about, make sure and comment below and let us know. And if you like the video, don't just troll our video, just click like so that we can feel appreciated and we get good feedback on the things that are helpful to you and uh, yeah, don't be a troll. Alright, have a good, uh, good day and thanks for watching.